tonight's meeting is being videotaped, just to let everybody know. Just we make that announcement now, just because of, uh, just so And there's pictures, yeah, there's some pictures from Kelvin. Yeah. We might have had one, uh, nobody's here from, uh, no, they're not here. There might have been one press person, but I don't see them here, but they're going to come. Um, we got the rain. Yes, oh, we, got the, we, yes, we got the star here. Oh, I mean, the real press is here. Yeah, we got exactly, exactly. Um, there is going to be. Uh, I got an announcement actually to make. Let's start with. There might be some traffic issues over there. The O'Neill Tunnel. They have to do some resurfacing work. It's going to be down to one week. Now they had postponed it. It's supposed to take place before. It's going to take place this weekend. It starts Friday night at 10 p.m. They shut it down to one lane. This is going northbound. Okay. It goes from Friday 10 p.m. to Saturday morning 11 a.m. when they open it up. And then again on Saturday night, 10 p.m. to Sunday morning 11 a.m. And anybody coming, say, south going north, we're expecting to have uh, a lot of traffic. Yeah, but there might be some residual traffic as people try and get around on the city streets when they see the tunnels all backed up. We think they'll jump off early. So I've got some traffic offices out. Uh, Say around North Washington Street, the Keeney Square area, and some of them had to be out just so they'll get people who, who jump off the highway early. We don't all drive from the neighborhood and send them that way. So, did just want to mention that at the beginning before you get uh, into the, some of our other issues. Uh, for overall crime, there were no homicides, there were two sexual assaults. We usually don't go into those reports, but it does seem like a lot for, for two. Uh, one was a uh, a homeless uh, female at Security Park, and the second one was an incident that took, started in a bar room and wound up over uh, in Columbus Park. It was an intoxicated female, and the officers came upon it and uh, placed the uh, male person under arrest because the female first uh, victim was, uh, uh, was basically just uh, unconscious. And that's a, a, a crime. There was one robbery. You probably all heard about it. This is the Irish kid who decided to rob bogus for a uh, Unbelievable. That's not a video. It's unbelievable. Yeah. He wound up, uh, he's 25 years old. He's never been arrested in Ireland. He was here on vacation. It was his first day in Boston. And he apparently been drinking. You know, people would be shot. The young Irish lad uh, wound up pleading guilty at his arraignment. So they had his parents had come over, and the judge and the bakery agreed that it really was a drunken incident. So we basically got like a year's uh, probation to, to carry over to Ireland and sent back right back to Ireland. He was so, sent back to Yeah. <coughs> so that was that. But uh, obviously, it just shows you again some of the alcohol issues and, and, and with the young, you know, the young guy who was one of could ruin his life by doing something like that or hurt somebody. That's a possibility. <laughs> um, there were no aggravated assaults. There were seven break-ins. That's up from six to same period last last year. Um, something we've been working on. Obviously, we're concerned. There was uh, one in the arrest on from Henshin Street. Uh, we'll have, uh, Teddy's going to go through the reports after I finish. One auto theft, it's down from uh, three last time. There's six last, regular last week, same as the same period last year. Four last week for motor vehicles, we have seen a, a, a big decrease, uh, down from 20, same period last year. So mm -hmm. I think uh, just the guys have been doing some good work on those, making some arrests, and also hopefully people are finally learning the lesson not to leave valuables in, in the car when you open. I think that plays by the uh, There were no reported graffiti, no community disorders, and six uh, six police tolls. We issued 121 motor vehicle violations and 437 parking citations. Overall crime for the North End, we continue to show a, a, a big decrease from the previous year with 160 total crimes compared to 189 uh, from last year. So we're still down in the North End. Uh, like I mentioned, we did have an increase uh, in, in burglary, so we're concerned about For the arrests, there were eight arrests for last month. Uh, one possession of Class B drugs, one shot, robbery, as we mentioned. Uh, two individuals from uh, the community. Okay, you know. 
Oh, there's two guys that let one thing go. One for possession of Class D drugs, one for assault and battery, and the one I mentioned that was charged with the uh, sex offense. Uh, and you want to go through the reports? I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the Zanies, uh, 914, it was 20 Sheep Street. The, um, Copy number three here at 20 Sheep Street. Uh, she arrived home and was, and when she came in, it was an unknown white male and a white female leaving the about and he just came down and uh, did the DNA. And they uh, basically got away with um, they kicked in the front door and they took um, perfume cameras. Uh, <coughs> Out as far as how she must have been a photographer, she had all her cameras that were stolen from her apartment, which is cool, was quite a bit. And um, toiletries and um, jewelry, the uh, jewelry block container of jewelry. And the, um, basically, what happened, she heard them, the male say to the female suspect, Let's go, it's time to go. And they fled the, they fled the building. Uh, the uh, next one is um, on 914, uh, 645, between 840 and 645 p.m. at 45 Charter Street. The um, victim reports the uh, suspect uh, forced open the front door and removed um, two laptops, three laptops. Uh, and, um, computer equipment. Next one was the same address, 45 Charter, apartment number 8 on 914, between, between 9.10 a.m. and 11.39 p.m. Again, um, all camera equipment. And four sets of camera equipment stolen from the victim at 45 Charter Street. The uh, <coughs> next one was a um, this was the 17 henchman on 918, uh, 4.45 p.m. It came in as a being in progress. And the officers responded were right on the scene and the, um, the suspects were fleeing. They had uh, cut, bolt cut and stole the victim's scooters. And one was tackled on Commercial Street by the rink, right off uh, by a detail officer. And the other scooter was pursued over at the Charlestown. And, uh, Arrested after chase in Charlestown. So two arrested. That was the one at 17 Henshin. Were they local kids? No. No. No, no, no. They were uh, Dorchester. Dorchester kids. There was um, three altogether, one one being <coughs> And then that was on September the 18th. The uh, next one, September 26th, between 820 a.m. Six ten p.m. at 11 Sheep Street, apartment 16. Uh, victim reports um, the apartment door was forced open, and um, the television was taken, a uh, map, computer, a miscellaneous jewelry, and uh, a watch. And that was on the 26th of September at 11 Sheep Street. And the next one was a. Um, by 9.28, between 10.15 a.m. and 6 p.m., 40 Lewis Street, a uh, victim reports that the uh, return home found that the front door had been Jimmy fried, the lock had been fried open, and a bow CD player was taken, a uh, jewelry box, and sterling silver bangle bracelet. Okay. And the last one was the, just on the 2nd of October, between 8.45 a.m. and 6 p.m. 7 Unity, the victim reports that she got um, the front door was, front entrance, living room window was forced open. Right? And um, there was a uh, camera, uh, two those docking stations, a shoulder bag, a Nintendo game, not a machine, 
uh, laptops, sunglasses, and miscellaneous jewelry was taken in the uh, We had uh, six lassenies on 99 from uh, Prince Street, last year a bicycle. Uh, on, nine, on September the 8th, from 65 Commercial Wharf, on the last name of Bicycle. On um, 914, on Commercial Wharf 56, uh, a last name in the building. Chief Street, on the 13th, someone stole the victim's uh, license plates off the motor vehicle. And at 109 Atlantic Ave, right, another bicycle stolen. The car brakes was um, one sergeant's walk on 913. The uh, first the victim left a uh, laptop in the car. Mm -hmm. On the 22nd of September at Princeton Salem, the victim's motor vehicle was broken into and a bag, cosmetic bag was taken. A, um, Compact discs and a computer taken from the victim's car. At uh, 922, excuse me, 101 Atlantic Ave, the victim reports that the front the right rear window was broken and uh, her folder bag with all her um, billing information for her business was stolen. Her own personal information and prescription eyeglasses. Um, 10, October the 2nd, 10 commercial walk. Uh, the, um, briefcase was stolen, a leather money clip, $20, U.S. Uh, $45 country, U.S. penalty stolen from the motor vehicle, and an iPad stolen from the motor vehicle. And the auto theft was at 230 Commercial Street. And that was um, victim reports that in 1993, Volvo, 940, it was, um, that his daughter popped up around um, 2 p.m. And the next morning, uh, it was found to be stolen at 10 p.m. It was part of the 230 Commercial Street. And that's the uh, last three days of the report. Excuse me. I, I, I just want to bring up two major things. September 15, 150, 152 Salem Street, 12 policemen showed up at this location. They broke the window. None of this was mentioned. 145 Intercourt Street, Thursday night, they woke up a mother, a father, and a child. Uh, on uh, the, the apartment was, I think, the fourth floor in the rear, and they woke up the family on the margin street, and one policeman came down and handled this. You guys didn't mention any of these, these, uh, these things here? The 150 Salem Street was a, uh, a vandalism, a broken window. 12 policemen showed up for that. Well, let me see. Supposedly. Yeah, well, and the sergeant yeah. showed up. The, yeah. the walking guys showed up, and the sergeant showed up as well. The body four guys in the sergeant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Everything was broken glass. Uh, there was some. Uh, oh, the tenant broke the window. An intoxicated tenant. September 20th, what they did at 145 Endicott Street, rear yeah, apartment, that one uh, motorcycle cop came down and supposedly saw 28 women and eight males leave the building at a party that disrupted somebody's life on that margin street. Is this need? even on file? Because uh, there was two calls made before they came what down. What was the address here? 145 Endicott Street, oh, rear apartment. On the affected 145. <laughs> Yeah? Oh, yeah, they were, um, what well, was the uh, arrest? They were arrested. They were arrested? Yeah, they were 20, arrest. 22, 22 girls and 8 guys were arrested that night? No, they made an arrest for drug and arrest. Okay. Okay. All right. And, uh, Angela, where are you? Over there. Oh. 38, uh, 38 not 
Did you call those? It was a weekend. Um, one of the guys I think called. I'm not sure to yeah. be honest with you. Okay. We were outside. We were outside having a conversation, yeah. and it was around uh, midnight, and um, um, they were urinating off the roof onto North Venice Street itself. What day of the week? Um, I think it was the weekend. It was either a, a Friday night or a, or a Saturday. In September, this past month. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, it was a couple weekends ago, or three weeks ago. Or? I, what I was made to understand from uh, one of the it's a condo building, mm -hmm. and what I was I thought it was a, I thought the people that were on the top floor that own a condo, we've had problems with them in the past. What number, Angela? Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. And it's a condo. And what was the, the building people? is a yeah. condo. And were they go they were partying on the roof? There's, they have a, there's a roof deck, and yeah. I thought that just the top floor had access to it, but I was told the that the whole building has access to it, and that there were two young men whose dad owns the condo, I think, like on the second floor, <coughs> and they were the ones that were actually causing all the problems on the roof. Okay. And uh, I don't know now for sure. Somebody had mentioned on the street that they thought that the condo was up for sale. All right. Well, uh, we'll go down and pay them a visit. I don't know if we have it in, our, in, in the calls that we have with us now, but we'll definitely go down and pay them a visit if they were doing that. Thank so, you. Thanks, Angela, for giving us my attention. I think it was Sunday night or Saturday. I don't know if I'm Sunday. They were front. They're sitting in front of the Casa Maria on the cross the street. They sit on that front, drunk and skunks. And then the cars were going by. They were going by pretty fast. They were kicking them. They were kicking the cars when yeah. they were going by? Yeah, they were going by, yeah. One kid got out, thank God, they didn't try. But, uh, Did you call up on them? I called twice to uh, 911. No one answered. Okay. What did they tell you when you called? Did they say they had any weapons? They said no. Did they ask you if they had any weapons? Did they yeah. tell them what happened or they kicked the cars? I told them, no, okay. I called and twice. they caught in Cooper on uh, drugs. We did get that call at uh, 212. Yeah, it was past 2 o'clock. 2.12 a.m.? Well, 2.12 we got the call. Is that the only one? Yeah, well, I don't have the call. You don't have the call. Oh, that's, that's, that's not a database call. Right? No. Yeah. 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 We don't have the full print out. We just, just there was a call 2.12 a.m. That's when they come home. Yeah. They live right there? They must, yeah. 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 Yeah. Well, today the students are back in, as you know. And uh, we've seen, obviously, we're getting some complaints. Uh, I had a couple of other addresses that people, uh, Aileen helped me on, and Sasha Lima is uh, following up for the uh, same type of general disruptive behavior. Officer, getting yep. back to the urination on the street, yep. at 153 Salem Street. It's a street level apartment. There's young students in there. They're too lazy and drunk to walk back into the apartment. They went up the stairs to the building next to them and urinated. All three boys, one at a time. What day was that? The same night that the window got broke on Salem Street because I was just going to call 911 when the cops came. Yeah. And they uh, ran inside they and closed the their door. Separate. Separate group? New, another bunch of students. Yeah. And which one? Which one are they? Are they in 150? They're at 153. 153. Yeah. Do we know what apartment? Right on the street level. You can't miss it. It's a white doorway. We're gonna pay them a visit also. Again, we're gonna have a lot of these. They're out every now. It's not Thursday. They are every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Again, it's drunk till 12, 1 o'clock. Then they go off. Then they come back home. But before they come home, they eat in bovis, which I thought they were only supposed to sell bread. I get up to go to work early in the morning and there's crap all over my stairs from bowls because they're not feeding them just bread. I'm sick of Obviously it. the canoli thing wasn't. No, right. It's it's really disgraceful. I have no respect. No, it's anybody, anybody coming home from being out drunk every weekend night. Stops to get something to eat, and they feel it's their duty to sit wherever they want and make a mess. 
Well, are people going in by looking for them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought you meant the bottom of the stuff. No, no. Oh, 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 no. Last Friday or Saturday night, there was a whole gang of kids down behind the story ice cream rink, and they were running around going like this. So somebody was down there selling them marijuana. So, um, did you call on them? Ooh. No, because no. there's call and call on. I noticed that we now walk up the Prado. Um, the gate going into the back of the Elliott School. Yes, because of we, 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 yeah, we got it. Yeah. We met with them and asked them to because of the kids cutting through. Right. And now we they're going that, uh, I'm not going to have during the summer with them. I don't know. The gangs aren't as large as they were at the uh, top of the Deep Political Park at the corner of um, Hall and Snow Hills. There's maybe 10 or 15 as opposed to 100 that were there a couple of months yeah. ago. Yeah. But, we, we but them now the new, the new hangout or the place they think where they're oblivious to everyone is behind the ice skating rink. Which, which I never say jurisdiction. It, it, it's actually, it's, on, it's, it's the state police jurisdiction, but we send our officers back there, and we never say it's not our jurisdiction. We go back there and we take the problem. But I have had some recent complaints behind the Ray Park about people finding uh, beer bottles and things like that in the last two weekends. And we go from there, and we and they chase them out of there, Captain Lee, and, and we go up to Cops Hill Terrace. And, and then we chase them out of there, and they go to the flights. And they just think you're wrong. And, and they just get chased. We've been saying, it's been years, we've been saying the same thing. We need police presence, we don't have it. That's the bottom line. If you guys would just drop, send the car around, it doesn't take long. Maybe you could stop a little bit of screaming in the street. Maybe you, I mean, I got to buy the newspaper on a Saturday morning, on a Sunday morning, you're stepping over, throw up, there's beer bottles on top of cars. 
There's Alan. wet cups all over the street. I mean, they're drinking and everything in the street. So obviously, if someone was around driving, they'd see it too. And not at 9 o'clock. Yeah, I mean, well, it's after mid two, three. It's come on. It's so when you call for the same thing for about how many years now? He was out walking, actually, till 3 in the morning at the other night. Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll be to 7-Eleven night for a couple of hours. Here. I'll take about five minutes, Tops. Um, we actually uh, received an inquiry from a reporter that happened to be with the Globe to go out on a walk, walk around. So uh, we booked up at about 11.30. At about 10 minutes to 12, we went out and uh, we found our way first off at um, Hanover and Cross. So part of the walkthrough was um, an explanation as to you know where the complaints are and where we feel the officers. So a few months ago, uh, there were a lot of complaints that came into Captain Lee that there was a crowd that would come from Phoenix Hall Marketplace, that Broaden State Street crowd, and that's where they're feeding back into the North End. So we would have an officer there, we'd have an officer over at Salem across. So we explained that you know, and then we decided we were going to walk up Hanover Street, and as we proceeded up Hanover Street. Went to the far end of Hanover Street, came back. Uh, I believe we went down Palmenta. Uh, we stopped into one of the uh, restaurants there. We received some complaints about their windows. Spoke to the manager of the bartenders about their windows being open. Uh, you know, they in turn stated that the police had been down on Tuesday. I learned tonight somebody from City Hall and Special Services has been down there. <clears throat> and we also had put in two calls to them earlier in the week. So, and again, which I'm just kind of open with the uh, reported and trying to show them different things. So, no, okay. we get on to, let me just do my five minutes and then you can ask any questions. We get on to Salem Street and there's an awful lot of kids out for Salem Street. That's where we kind of saw the most college kids. Yeah, yeah. And as we progressed down Salem back towards Cross, uh, there was a group of kids that had kind of broken up. There was about 14 of them. And as they came by me and I gave them, hey, how you doing? How you doing? You know, you got to quiet down and up. And okay, the officer, okay. And they're kind of looking at me with Google eyes, you know, like, like, why would he say hi? Why would he talk to us? Blah, 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 blah. So they proceeded on by. We walked up uh, Salem. Uh, we took a left. Actually, before we took the left onto uh, Prince uh, Sergeant Earl, I think a lot of these have seen him. He does the uh, Bova's uh, Bakery detail part of it. And the reporter talked to him for a little bit. And, uh, and we've always openly said it that when Sergeant Earl does that detail, uh, and in our opinion, he does a great job because he's not only in the store, he's outside of the store. And he deals with all of the complaints, complaints that come by the store, especially on the noise. As we went on to Prince Street, one of the constituents that attends this meeting happened to be out the window, and we had an interesting conversation from the third story window as to some of the activity uh, that goes on out on Prince Street. And the Globe reporter, you know, is right as we're going, we made our way down to um, North Margin. And before we came out to Endicott Street, we stopped off and kind of explained what happens on North Margin with the late night urination, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the lighting issues stopped off again, uh, you know, again, uh, conversed with another constituent down there. Um, and then we worked over to Endicott Street, uh, and I explained some of the uh, issues that we've had in the past with some of the apartments uh, on Endicott. Heading, we'll just say, towards North Margin. There's no need to, to give it specific address. And then we worked our way back out uh, as we came down. Uh, we worked our way basically back out to uh, Hanover. Went down to uh, the vicinity of Fleet Street because at some of the meetings we get a lot of the complaints that the people who are down, like, you know, we'll just say those restaurants, well, those bar rooms on commercial, uh, late at night they start wandering up um, Fleet Street and they're awfully loud. So, uh, you know, we, I basically, oh, we went down to Unity, we went down to the uh, Fall Revere Mall, you know, explained a lot of the activity. I try to basically give them a good picture of exactly what goes on in the North End and the complaints that we see, receive from everybody in this room. So then we got in the car, and I wanted them to get a good look at the Fenial Hall, uh, Broad and State, uh, all the way down at uh, Joe's American Bar and Grill, that whole area, just so they kind of get a better idea as to the amount of people that uh, could migrate back into the North End. After we drove around for a bit, we parked uh, on the plaza area at uh, Hanover and Cross, walked back down Hanover. Now it's just about 2.15, 2.30 in the morning. And basically what I saw on that given night, and any other night can be an, a random night, but what I saw at the beginning of the night, like I had mentioned, I saw the college kids and made it a point to have them quiet down. When I went back down originally to 
in over and for us to walk on Officer's Road. It was like a group of like nine guys kind of wrestling and grappling. And they were kind of mid-20s. Mm -hmm. And we said right away, hey, fellas, you know, can you quiet down? And again, they looked at us with the goo-goo eyes. Uh, and I did that to every single person. If anybody had seen me, I made a contact with every single person just to see what the reaction would be, even just for the regular person walking down the street. And they kind of didn't get it. And we said, you know, you gotta, you got to quiet down here in the neighborhood. But as the night progressed, there's five, ten, another five, another eight. Yeah. It's just nonstop. Mm -hmm. But let me finish now, let me finish now. As people are piling back into the north end, my impression from really two to almost quarter or three, like 25 to 30, I didn't really see any college kids at that point on this given night. Okay, let me just finish. Let me, yeah, so, so my whole point on that given night was that an awful lot of young professionals are up late at night till 2.30, yeah. yeah. quarter or three Absolutely. in the morning. Yes. And then the other thing that we noticed was the, you know, the corner store happened to be open. Well, the business is open. That's another reason why people are going to congregate and go in and get things. Yeah. It's, it's something attractive. You know, you're walking home, hey, I'm going to grab something to eat before I go home. They probably drink. Yeah. Imagine they are drinking. So, so we had a conversation with the corner store, uh, and the corner store will uh, positively from here on and be closed at 12 o'clock. We did have a conversation with uh, Cafe Pompey. Uh, we're looking for a police detail or a possible rollback in the hours instead of the 4 o'clock. Because in our opinion, you know, as we have these discussions about the late night activity, Boba's Bakery is open. There's a police detail that might, are we happy that they're open? Well, we're not, but it is what it is for now. They hide a police detail. So we want to see changes with the Cafe Pompey. We've already seen a change with the corner store which should happen from here on in, that they won't be open. And again, we don't need eyes and ears from store owners. We prefer to have store owners closed because it's like Buzzy's Roast Beef. You don't want the North End again to be a destination place at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and that's what can happen when you have these late night eaters. Yeah, it is. So anyways... There's nothing against the store yeah. either, yeah. by the way. Yeah. They've, they've, no, they've had these exactly. meetings, as you exactly. guys know. There's nothing against the store, but just that's what their license, is, license requires. So that's why we did that. It's, it's nothing against them and no direct complaints. So, so how do you make so Just 20 more seconds, 20 more seconds. So finally, you know, we, we finished, we wrapped it up at about 3 o'clock. And uh, I opened it up if the uh, writer wanted to come down to the meeting and then kind of hear from, uh, you know, the North End residents. Uh, but the Globe reported it's not here. I don't know when the article will come out or maybe the report will be back on here next month meeting. Uh, but we're sort of expecting that there'll be an article on the North End, and, it, and it's really all about the noise. Because for me, my whole piece on the whole North End uh, wasn't specifically about college kids and young professionals. It's the noise. Yes. You walk with me, we'll walk the whole North End, and you'll witness the noise. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. You have a lot of happy, happy, bubbly, yeah. crazy, yeah. funny... Once. Let me finish. Once. But that's what it is. They're out to like water or three, wherever they might be coming from. But those people are the people that do live live in the north end. They're not just passing through, they're living in the north end. No, no, I'm just, just giving you my observation. That's all. Okay, I'm done. How do you mitigate? They have friends that live in the I see it. We were down there. No, I didn't like, like they I, come I, in just, not only from Hanover and Zeal from Broadway. They come the back way out of Richmond. What I really said to her, they come in from everywhere. They yeah, were right. everywhere. Like, so is that a challenge for the mitigation plan? I know. It's people talking loudly. Yes, that's, but that's exactly what it is. I know. It's, it's people yeah. talking loudly. And but when you ask them to be quiet, crazy. they don't. No, I've gone out there with themselves. Do you know, well, officer, I stay on the weekends because I know I'm not going to sleep. I know I'm not going to sleep. I open my window and tell them, guys, please walk home a little quieter. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But how do you, and if I call 911, what do I tell them? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I happen to catch a young man, a young lady. Wow. In the little alleyway between Oakton and Commercial Street. That's like a public bathroom. I showed them that. It's awful. You cannot walk. The smell is So I actually spoke to him, and I was very nice to him. Uh, I said, Would you do that in your mother's doorway? You know, and I uh, didn't look at me. I said, You know, a couple of Then I got a little bit. I said, Nicely. I'm talking to you. Nicely. 
Okay. You know, they think nothing that's just me, like was you know, anomaly. Yeah. Like, how old was he? How old was he? This guy was like doing three or something. Right? Yeah, he's like a young adult. He's like, okay. 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 I got a call. I did get a call coming up there actually from a You know, for two guys urinating. By the time I got up there with a writer, we had a photographer with her. There were a couple of guys. The first two guys I grabbed said they weren't. Now, they were about 30. Definitely had a few to drink didn't live anywhere even in the Boston area. They were heading to Salem Street and I just said, can you go back to your car and just take off? Well, we were gonna go, I said, take off now. And they walked right back up the street to the car and they left. I told you we had DNA. <laughs> I said, you leave it here, we're gonna check it out. Okay. So just real quick and I'm done, but uh, we had 34 oh, calls. Yeah. 30, yeah. 34 calls from 12 o'clock on, and uh, which is a significant yeah. uptick from what we normally get. But was, we always say, usually with the college kids, once they all come in in September, that's when we're really out with a loud party car. We're going to all these calls. Us, you know, if between myself and Teddy, we were at a, a, a couple of occasions. No, and I did have one party that I onsided uh, in, uh, off of Hanover Street down by uh, Green Hill Lane, and it was kind of an amazing for young professionals. They're screaming, hollering, yep. chanting, the music's going. I'm yelling out to the window. We had to be there for 15 minutes. I couldn't get their attention. And then she poked her head out the window, and I said, "You're going to close your windows. You're going to shut your door." You know, and very, very apologetic. And I said, I want everybody out there because it would take a while before I get down Reno to go back out chatter and get all the way back around. But by the time I got around, there were like 14 kids in there. Every one of them was gone except for the the, uh, the girl. And, you know, we, she got the warning letter. And I told her, if we come back here again, if I get it on the sheet, and I said, you're going to get written up for it. So we never got a call on it. I just happened to want sighted going down Reno. I've been actually hearing music. I said, well, what's going to happen? Well, that's what I'm saying. If there's someone that's driving around, they can see and hear for themselves. The way they I mean, well, 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 as the captain had mentioned uh, at the Elliott there, um, you know, when we went out travel, we actually had a car go. Uh, it was already there before I got there because that's one of the locations we check in at North Margin and Endicott. Just out of the blue, the, uh, the, 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 the loud party car was down there. So, they I mean, they are out and about. They have a ton of locations to check, mm -hmm. as you know. Yeah. They, they are out there. And one of the things, too, well, you know, we ask, can we get a few more off? I mean, realistically, they're telling me, look at the overtime you're spending down the north end. You know, that's how they look at yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know, but it's, no. yeah. you know, everyone's got oh, a budget. Yeah. We have a budget down at the station. Uh, believe me, I would love to put out some more You know, because we, we, we see it. The car car goes by, a lot of kids at the corner. Yelling, they don't say, they don't know what they want to say. Hey, lower your voice. People are sleeping. They just continue to go. I see it all the time. I'm up all night. Friday night and Saturday night. Take all the, night. Take, take the, the vehicle number down, Carol. That's right. Take the vehicle number down and call in any others. That's what I did. Well, she agreed to the deal. So, I guess, is it not just saying, I know being at the corner of our attention, I'm under the understanding that a few of those buildings Of the fact that a lot of these kids have been, uh, you know, 
you guys have broken up these parties. Can we hit the landlords where it hurts the most? I mean, they, they have to be notified because a lot of them are absentees. They don't live in the neighborhood. And that, I think, is the biggest problem. Because we, have such a we do have a, we do have a problem properties task force that, that does that yeah. and identifies the uh, landlords. And Sal Martina, Mike Rossi, Vascatilli isn't here, but they did pass an ordinance about finding the, uh, the landlord that was like, duplicated uh, from uh, an ordinance they had in Brookline, and that was uh, came in over the over the summer. Now, I mean, you're, I think you're somewhat new, so I apologize, but as the captain said, Rich Brealish isn't here, but in that loud party car, when we do go over the Suffolk liaison, we do take down all the information if it's a loud party. We do fill out a form. That information does go back to Suffolk University, and those kids are brought into the Dean of Students. We do that at all our orientations. Every year we have an orientation for 1,400 kids. Four times a day we take 60 kids, and we do it over a period of seven days. So the education part is there. They know right up front that, you know, this is what's going to happen down on the north end. And we have city ordinance books. We find them on occasion. We'll make arrests. But usually what happens at the beginning of the year is we're going to get these calls and these addresses between the loud party calls, the follow-ups from Teddy, that I'd like to think by the time we get to next month, you know, this should get on at least 70% on calls to any of these addresses. And if they don't, then that's where, as I explained to the Globe writer, that's where the progressive discipline comes into play. But you're right, the landlords are ultimately should be responsible yeah, yeah. for their tenants. You know why? One minute, Cindy, because those students will get, they'll toss them out, new students will come in, the landlord don't care, they're getting their money, and the same thing happens again. So if you tell the landlord, if I have to come back to your house, your building, one more time, you're going to get fined. You watch how fast that shops. Was it Sal right. working on something? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sal is trying to get the Yes, ma'am. Um, I've caught several times on 64 Prince Street. You know, I'm at 61. You guys took care of everybody in our building. But um, we've called a lot of times at 64 Prince Street across from us. Across, yeah. And it's the, always the second floor. It's a ton of kids. I don't know if they're young professionals or if they're college. When they come out, there's like 25, 30 kids that come out of that, that apartment. And we've called the police. The, I have to say the police have come. But when they come, after everybody leaves, then the kids wait till the police leave. Okay. Yeah, and then they all go back in. 64 Prince? 64. It's the tailor in the North End that owns the building. People have gone down and talked to him and have told him we're getting tired of this, but he doesn't do anything. What is that called last month? Yeah. Last month I called. Yeah. We're gonna have we didn't have it on our list, but uh, okay. last month I called in the in the month before it's September or August. September or August. September or August. August. No, it was August. Uh, oh, okay. August. Yeah. And they came. And so, the police did yeah. come. They did come, and they're like 25, 30 kids. And this came is out still going on, though. Is this still going it's on? Still going on. Yeah. yeah. Like every weekend, they're having these parties. They stop from 5 p.m. on Saturdays. So I come out of mass. It, it's scary. That's why I said, I fear the weekend. And I shouldn't have if, to if, live if you like see that them, And I always say this. If you see them going over 30 packs and they're starting at 5 or 6 o'clock before the party even gets going, oh, call 911. I, I do. I do. I do. Well, I call it any time. Like, we're not here to give them, you know, a little party. But that, that, that's, I mean, it's, if they're of age, I mean, they're 21 years old. Everybody has the right to do what they want in their apartment. And right. again, it goes to the quality of life. With no Lady Gaga, Jay-Z, blaring out the window at 12 o'clock, yeah. you know, bottles flying, or the, 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 the noise. Like when I, like Reno Lane, was 452 Hanover, you know, she was like shocked I was at that window. Uh, what, what's funny, I said, you're yelling out the window. There's kids in this neighborhood, there's elderly people sleeping. We'll shut the music off. No, you're gonna shut the, you know, from, you're gonna shut the window, you're gonna shut the door, you're gonna be out of that apartment in five minutes. She, she could have battled back and forth and said, hey, Right. They don't have to leave, you know, but she did, mm -hmm. and that was good. She still got the letter, but it, again, it wasn't a 911 call, it was an on site. And, uh, but they were young professionals, they weren't called. Yeah, but have you guys sent, do you guys send squatters out in this neighborhood to different liquor stores and, and dry stores and sell yeah. liquor? Because yeah. the truth is, yes, there's a squad that does that, and they actually have heard that liquor store before. So there is a squad that does that. They work out of uh, City Hall, Patricia Malone, uh, they don't work directly out of, out of my station. Um, okay. Uh, oh, oh, I just yeah. want to say something about what she said. Um, the word on the street is they don't card the females. Like they only card the uh, guys. Mm -hmm. So you should be making sure that they're yes. both the younger males and females. 
We'll check that. Okay. You got to remember too. There's college kids that are going to be out there that are going to be 21 that might right. be buying a lot of booze right. for everybody else. Yeah. As, as you know, they're going to yeah. be buying for the younger kids. It, it, you know, oh, yeah. They're all students, by the way, too. The seniors yeah. are 21, as right. you know. Um, I know you guys have come to our building at 61 Prince, and we're very grateful for that. You've spoken to both of the units that have given us a problem. The one unit has completely behaved. The other unit, like, they start up again on the weekends, and they, like, party, like, until 11 o'clock because they know, oh, well, our rules in the building are, you know, no loud noise. But anyway, they have a ton of people over till 11 o'clock. We can call you before 11 o'clock, correct? You call me your life, call me your life, call me your life. Because if they're making yeah. noise, like, which right. they do every weekend, but then they all 11 go out 11 o'clock is like a city noise ordinance, but you can call before 11 o'clock. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, because then like at 11 o'clock, about 20 of them will all go out. Is now, is your building a condo? Yes. yes. And so they're in someone's condo? Is that a condo one? They're renting, they're renting yeah. a condo? They're renting. Have you told them, do you know the owner of that condo? Have you spoken to them? We know the owner. We find her a million times. She doesn't pay, she her, doesn't fines. pay her fines. She doesn't, she doesn't care. Because then she has a couple people that live next door to her in the building that they say, oh, we don't hear anything. And then, then it ends up a problem when all the rest of us are hearing them in the building, and when they exit the building, they're all taking drinks out and like causing all kinds of problems. Just on that 111 and 115 uh, Salem Street, they were written up. Uh, from what I have here, I don't have the report. It was three times the license premises violation. Would there be a capacity? Uh, <coughs> she's saying 20 people come out at once. Yeah. There'd be a capacity. Violation there. You call the inspection services. Yeah, I mean, you can't. Yeah. I mean, you no, can't have 20 people in a. Yeah. ISD is not coming out at. Oh, I realize that. Yeah. What I'm saying. Yeah, they, they, they don't do anything. That wouldn't even be. A, that, right. They wouldn't even follow up. It's just stick with the 911 though. Yes, sir. I don't. My wife just recently mentioned to me. That there's a business up on Salem Street, up on the upper end of Salem. Uh, do you get any complaints about selling uh, alcohol to underage children in the upper end of That's what they got. That's the one we did. Last weekend, they got rid of them. Yeah, we brought them up. The, the variety store that sells them. Yeah. Yes, that's okay. the store. Is yeah. that the only, yeah, the first and only time? Yes. Yeah, because I, my wife mentioned this maybe a month or so ago. But the one near the old one church? So what usually happens when you write them up? Salem, they have it right to the hearing. They go yes. to a hearing. Yes. And that's that. 926. September 26, they were at the place you mentioned. But they have a right to a hearing and they go to, you know, they could, technically they could have their license uh, suspended. If, if there are multiple violations, they could even lose their license. But we just write the violation that goes up to City Hall for the uh, hearing. Also, um, I was just in there with my young children the other, uh, last night, as a matter of fact. Are they still allowed to sell paraphernalia, drug paraphernalia? Uh, the pipe, if it's, uh, you can sell a pipe, it, it, it have to be, there's an ordinance against a crack, a crack pipe, so we have to say it was a crack pipe, but if it could be used for to break up tobacco, and we couldn't say yeah, that. Yeah, it's they're very they're difficult they're to enforce they're those. They're not tobacco pipes. They're but I, I hear you. But it's, yeah. Holes, holes on the sides and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, they don't, the, the thing with that is it has to do with a screen, too. They sell you the thing without a screen. Yeah. And that's that's how they get over it. <laughs> can, I, uh, can I make a suggestion to my friend that I had over there? The next, the next time you see someone urinating anywhere, can you give us a better description? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were nice when you said it. I, I know you were nice. I know you were nice. All right. Well, thank you all for coming. What, last word? True, true. Hello.
There's no need for 24 hours. Even with that cop there, it's Doesn't terrible. Make because when they walk away from Bovis, they're going to walk by where open. we live. Yeah. So it's not good. There's no reason for them to be open 24 hours. You cannot be that hungry that you don't have food in your house. Actually, and you can't wait until the four next four day. They do. They do. Not between 4 and 6, they can't. But, but they do. This is what I'm telling you, Tommy. I get up on Saturday because they walk by till 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. I don't sleep ever on the weekends. My stairs, where we live, I don't even want to say It's great. So it's full. And it's not just bread. It's full. Don't give me that. At least he hides the detail. Uh, I, you know, I don't mean to, to excuse that. I know. At least he does higher detail. I've spoken to them. They know there's been complaints. They know there's noise. They know the noise. You know, they know the Excuse me, guys. Get a, get a petition going. Sergeant, and I'll say this in front of the mayor. I know you have your hands tied. And the mayor is calling all the shots. He gave us the Elliott's. The Elliott School was going to be extended to the North Bennett Industrial School. That was wonderful. Those are crumbs compared to what's going on in this neighborhood. And it's been going on for 20 years, and they've been jerking us around for too long of a period of time. And just the thoughts of them throwing beer bottles off the hand of a street at the cops is so disrespectful. In another country, they would have died for such an act. Over here, it was just thrown under the rug. Let's call an ace and ace and a spade a spade here. Yeah. 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 Throwing beer balls at a roof and cars. We made arrests on that incident. That incident was, I, I believe, back in June. I don't care if it was last year. The bottom line is they didn't get punished enough for what they did. You people are supposed to be defending us. They're throwing beer bottles off a roof at you. And what chance do we stand? But she's right. Carol was right. I mean, we were coming here how many, how many months? For years. I mean, it's been years. Four, five, six years. And we, we keep repeating the same thing over and over. So obviously, nothing is getting done. Oh, things, things are getting done, but it's not going to be overnight, and we're not going to change people's culture of these young folks that no. make a lot of noise at night. You know that. But we can make it a little more comfortable for them. We can make it a couple of years. Yeah. We can. We can, but we're not going to change them. But they're not leaving. They're not leaving. Yeah. No, I know. You know, unfortunately. We know that. You know? I want to try to leave. All right. I'm going to try to leave.